Hey everybody, it's me here. Welcome to another Archetype 101. We're jumping right into the set 11 ones, right on the heels of the pre-release of set 11. So to give you guys a better understanding of what each archetype is supposed to do and what the cards do within an archetype so that you could either be prepared to play against it or decide that this is the deck you want to pick up on release of the set, we're going to go through every card in the archetype and try and understand what the deck is trying to do. And today we're looking at Mono Blue Baby Control. And this is going to be the bane of all, like most of the player base guarantee going into set 11. While I don't think it's the most broken deck of the set, I think it's very strong. And I think it's one of those decks that very few people are actually going to enjoy playing against. Quick reminder guys, before we get into it, I am doing a Vermilion Bloodline giveaway. This is the last week to get in there before we do the giveaway for a free box. It's an international giveaway, so if you want your chance at a Vermilion Bloodline box, I'll put the little eye over there. Just follow these simple instructions in the video and you're going to give yourself a chance at winning a set 11 Vermilion Bloodline box. So before we look at the cards, what's the deck trying to do? Well, it's a quick overview. It does a number of things. It's a draw go style control. Draw go style control is referred very often in uh, Magic the Gathering. It just means that for your turn, you're going to draw a card. You're going to put in energy. And oftentimes, that's all you're going to do. You're going to pass turn right after. And then your opponent goes. A very, very, like if we're talking extremes of like aggro mid range control, this is at the very extreme of control. And <laughs> there. I love this play style, but it's a very frustrating one to go against because it feels like your opponent's not really ever doing anything. It's a crackback style aggression. So a lot of your negates are battle cards, and that means that oftentimes you're just going to kick back, wait, and once your opponent starts aggressing you, that's when you start playing battle cards, and that's when you start putting on the aggression. Uh, otherwise, there's very few cards that you want to play uh, proactively. Sometimes you have to based on the matchup, but it's really one of those decks where you get the most value for your buck in terms of how you can aggress your opponent if they go and start attacking you. And it's servant oriented. A lot of your card advantage is based around servant. Uh, a lot, most of your counter plays, counter attacks are all servants. And then you have a number of cards, including the leader, uh, that have overload that allow you to cycle them. That them being at the bottom of your deck has extra usage because sometimes you can go fetch them or you can cheat them out. So there's a lot of extra utility in having them at the bottom of your deck. Plus, you get the extra heftness that Servant gives you, where you get a one-time usage attack for an extra 10k. So we'll start with a look at the leader. Here we got Blue Baby. It's a shame it's blue, because like, you know, all the other baby stuff has been red and yellow. It'd be really nice for that stuff to go in there, but hey, fine, whatever. So Auto, when you place this card in your leader, you activate up to one Planet Tuffle from your deck. So it's a field card. We'll go look at that after. Uh, but essentially, it's what makes the whole deck tick. And then auto when this card attacks, draw one card. Cool, pretty basic leader. Um, nothing too crazy, but having a draw on the front unconditionally, just having to attack is pretty good. Awaken when your life's at four or less, you may draw two cards and flip this card over. So he is a draw two leader, which is a big deal, right? Because as a really defensive leader, the, the hardest part that baby will have is as a control player is managing your energy so the fact that you don't get that extra energy off of your leader awaken is a pretty big deal meaning that you can't just recklessly use it all hoping to get some more afterwards then there's the awakened baby spirit of the tuffles overlord once per turn so now on the awakened side we have overlords so if we have any servants on the board now we're able to start clearing them to the bottom of our deck with simply our leader and then auto wins card attacks draw one card activate main once per turn look at the top three cards from the top of your deck add up to one mono blue card with counter skill among them to your hand place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order then choose one card in your hand and place it at the bottom of your deck so no matter what happens if you take a counter or not you're going to be pitching a card on a deck but with the amount of counters that this archetype has i, I don't see you whiffing this at all it'd be like a 1% chance, if not less, that you end up whiffing on this uh, activate main. So it gives you some extra utility, it gives you some search, allows you to set up the bottom of your deck also, which is pretty relevant. So we go into the negate everything aspect. Why are we negating everything? How can we afford to negate everything? And one of the biggest reasons is because of Planet Temple. So that's the one, it's the field card that comes in for free off of the baby leader. Uh, permanent, if your leader card is a blue baby, and all of your energy is mono blue, so you have to be mono blue to be running this deck. You can run some non-blue cards, like some apes and stuff like that, but they can't be set in your energy. The moment you do, you completely turn off Planet Duffel. When activating a counter skill of a mono blue card with an energy cost of five or less from your hand, reduce the energy cost of that card by one. So now all our negates are one cheaper. 
Now, mind you, a lot of the cards here are costed as if they were to be reduced, so that's not super insane, but we get some added bonus with some cards from previous sets, um, and in general, it still makes it way more viable to be running these counter cards. And then activate main once per turn, add one card from your life to your hand, then choose one card from your hand and place it at the bottom of your deck. So if you ever feel like you need some self-awakening, here's a way to do it. It's also an additional way to be setting up the bottom of your deck. So now we get to make all, not, not specified cost, mind you, we can't go below specified cost, but we are making everything that doesn't have a max specified cost of its energy cost to be lowered down by one. Very useful. So what are the closers for the deck? Um, if we're negating everything, we have to win the game, right? Well, we have the, a number of ways to win the game. Uh, first one being the unison. Comes down 4-3, plus 2, draw one card. Cool. Uh, the deck doesn't have an insane amount of draws. It cycles a lot, but it doesn't have a lot of card advantage, so any way that we can get it is pretty important, especially since the deck kind of folds to hand, uh, hand destruction. And then minus 5, activate main. If your leader card is mono blue, choose up to one of your leader cards, and it gets 15k double strike for the turn, and until the start of your next turn, you can activate mono blue cards with counter skill in your hand by choosing two cards, two other cards in your hand, and discarding them instead of paying the energy cost. So now, we have a big beater. We have a, a, a you know, let's say on our awakened side, we have a 30k double strike leader. R pretty good, you know, especially on the fact that it's hard to interact with the leader once we're in the combo phase. Then on top of that, all our counters now just cost cards. So if we dedicated all our energy to making huge plays this turn you know uh, we try and close out with the leader we play some battle cards to try and uh, finish off our opponent if we can't get there with that we're not automatically dead because now we have the ability to play our counter skills without having to actually pay the energy cost and when you consider things like dimension magic and stuff like that where you get our energy back there are many ways to be able to keep pushing through after this happens because this keeps this stays until the end of your opponent's next turn so it's not just your turn where you could play like a counter counter let's say it means on your opponent's turn, you still have the means to be defensive. Then we have Baby, the Saiyan Slayer. Not, not so much a closer. I mean, he's a closer in the sense that he's a double striker. Um, and there are multiple ways to get him out. But it, he also cheats out cards. Um, so it's more so what he enables. Simply than just the fact that like he's the closer of the deck. So double strike. Counter, counter attack, negate the attack and play the card, so you can play him defensively. Uh, counter, counter, play this card. So if you're, <laughs> if you're being the aggressor and you need some more gas, then you can pay three to get him out. So once per turn, if your leader card is a blue baby, you may look at the bottom card of your deck, and if it's a mono blue battle card with counter skill on it, an energy cost less than or equal to your current energy, other than a copy of this card, so you can't keep on looping this baby, you may play it, otherwise return it to the bottom of your deck. So essentially, now you get a free play of any counter ba battle cards at the bottom of your deck, which is pretty useful, right? We have some servants that have an extra 10k, they're big beefy beaters, but what the biggest thing you can set up with this is Baby Golden Avenger. And this is the real closer of the deck. This is the big daddy card, the one that you're most likely will close out with, if not will enable you to close out the game. So unique, triple strike, counterplay, play this card, and then the battle card being played as an energy cost of seven or less is returned to its owner's hand instead of being played. So pretty good. Um, you know, the ability to stop your opponent from being able to play one of their big finishers has a lot of advantage to it counter counter negate the counter skill and play this card so we have returned to the days of counter counters which is super powerful you know now we're going in to close the game blue has a way to just punch it and say no 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 i'm getting in here right now then auto when his cards play draw one card then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards ignoring barrier and place it at the bottom of its owner's deck so now we have removal on top of that we have an extra card draw this card does a lot it allows us to close out the game it's a closer in itself by being a beefy 30k triple striker and then we have some extra utility in that we can play it defensively we can play it offensively so there's a lot going on with this card mind you it is five specified blue so unfortunately we can't play it for four it very much is a turn five five energy play so then what, what what are we negating you know how good are negates for us to be able to execute this kind of draw go control style game plan so first off we have our set of servants we got bull up baby's minion counter attack negate the attack and play the card and then she's servant so she's essentially 15k on board that you get to play for one so one drop 15k negate the attack why not it's good enough there most decks would run this if they were able to Sun Gohan, Baby's Mean, probably one of the most annoying cards in the archetype. For two energy, you negate the attack and play this card. It has Servant, so it's a 25k beater. And then Auto, when this card is played, your opponent can't attack for the turn unless they choose one card in their hand and place it at the bottom of their deck. So now, Blue has a mini topo. Whenever your opponent wants to attack, they have to pitch a card. And on top of being a mini topo, it's a 25k with Servant, which means it's going to be able to attack in for 25k. And on top of that, 
it's going to be able to draw us an extra card busted and because we're shipping it back into our deck that gives us the opportunity to be able to draw it again which means we are able to cycle our topos which is absolutely absurd then we have vegeta ready to rumble blocker counter attack negate the attack and play this card and it's like the big version of gohan uh auto when this card is played your opponent can't attack for the turn unless they place one of their energy in their drop area so now your opponent really needs to be committed to saying okay i need to win this turn if i'm going to keep attacking otherwise i can't afford to because he does have blocker so not only are you negating the attack now your opponent needs to sack energy to be able to attack at all and if he decides to attack he's going to at least attack twice before being able to get in there unless obviously there's removal on the card that he's attacking with because you can block into that attack force him to pitch energy now he's gonna have to pitch another energy just to evil just to be able to keep going so strong now we have a couple of babies uh baby the body snatcher counter attack negate the attack then switch up to one of your energy one of your mono blue energy into active mode and then play this card so he's a 10k body with overlord which means now we have a battle card that we can play before having to awaken our leader to be able to start cycling the son gohans the bullas also he's free because he costs one energy he returns an energy to the deck uh, he gives you back an energy right away which means this is just straight up a free negate so coercion we says coercion on a body that draws us extra cards super primo super good and finally, we got Baby, Successor of the Tuffle King, counterattack, negate the attack, and play this card. Auto, you essentially get to switch the bottom of your deck with uh, a card from your hand. It, the bottom of your deck has to be a mono blue counter. And if you take that card, then you put a card onto the bottom of your deck. Could be any card. Uh, if you don't take anything, you put the card that you look back under. You should know it's on the bottom of your deck, but I mean, hey, sometimes people just go for it and you hit it, you hit it, you don't, you don't. Um, this is a great way to start, like I said, keep cycling, set up the bottom of your deck. Did I just ship a Sun Gohan to the bottom of my deck? Great, I'm going to go and pick him back up. So a lot of ways to recur in this deck, a lot of ways to really be able to stall, even in your worst matchups. Baby can easily survive till turn 4, 5, 6. It's not even a question. The deck has so much you know defensive capabilities um that it'd be like very 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 minimal amount of cases that this doesn't happen then we got the counter attack extras because obviously we need extra cards also so counter attack if your leader card is a blue baby card negate the attack and choose up to one of your mono blue battle cards with a counter skill and return it to its owner's hand all right so do you not want to take all your time to go to the bottom of your deck and then fetch up your son gohans again or your Vegeta is, or anything like that. Well, that's fine then. We'll just go ahead and negate the attack and get them back in hand anyways. So again, added added recursion. Just constant, constant recursion of your negates, of your resources to prevent your opponent from being able to punch through. And then we've got the promo card. This card comes out in the TPs. And honestly, this is what takes the deck over the edge. The deck was strong beforehand. We, I was testing it. It's good. Very viable deck. But this is like exactly what the deck needs because what you would find is that the deck often runs out of energy. It's it's while you do have a lot of free energy plays, the fact that you're on defensive, you know, trying to fight off an opponent's swarm if you haven't seen your Gohan is a little bit tough because you are going to run out of energy. That's why Dimension Magic is so important to the deck. Well, now we got Dimension Magic 2.0. Counter the attack. If your lead card is a blue baby card, negate the attack. Then switch up to two of your mono blue energy card to active mode. All right, so we got Dimension Magic. Cool. That we can play for one. Awesome. And then draw a card. Great. So now we have eight Dimension Magics in the deck. One of which can be used for no energy. One of which can be used to also draw you a card. Super good. You run four of no questions of in the deck. It's not, like there's no discussion. This card is so good because any card that allows you to go up on mana is so powerful because it just means you can continue, continue, continue to be defending yourself. Then we got the remaining counters because counter attacks are not the only thing that we have in the game. We also have counter plays. Here we have Bulma. Counter play. If your lead card is a blue baby card, play this card. And then if the battle card being played has an energy cost of one, it is returned to its owner's hand instead of being played. So this is like typically a one cost card i want to say so it makes sense that's a one cost but it also a servant which means it's a 15k beater that counterplays any one drops so here we could be talking about things like bms or self-awakening there's a number of one drops that are still played in the game so this is very you know while way more meta dependent it's good that the deck has some really early ways to start interacting with your opponent's turn one plays especially with things like broly swap like you can prevent their one drop and then like you're setting them back one turn so there's a lot of viability there
Sun Goten, Baby's Minion, Counterplay, play this card if the battle card being played has an energy cost of 4 or less. It's placed at the bottom of the owner's deck instead of being played. So for 1 extra energy, now we can hit 4 drops or less. <laughs> so I guess the difference between 1 energy is 3 energy cost for your opponent. And then he's got Servant, making him a 20k 2 cost beater. Baby, Diabolic Parasite, Counterplay, play this card, switch up to one of your mono blue energy tactic mode, which means you paid for two, but effectively it only costs you one energy because you also get one energy back. And then if the battle card being played has an energy cost of four or less, it's placed at the bottom of the owner's deck instead of being played, and this one has Overlord. So now we have additional ways to be able to get Overlord. You, you are going to find playing the deck that it is sometimes tough to keep an Overlord on the battle in the battle area. So any additional ones we can get, especially this one. I mean, obviously this is just a stronger version of the Sun Goten so it has extra versatility there it just happens to not also be a servant but that's fine overlord is more than enough and uh, definitely the more we have the better we the, the more we have the better baby artificial life form counter counter if your leader card is mono blue switch up to one your mono blue energy attractive mode then play this card so this one's only going to cost you two energy at the end of the day um, and this one is when you want to be the aggressor when you're trying to push in when your opponent's trying to defend and you just need more battle cards to try and punch in there This is one of those options Auto if your leader card is a blue baby card when this card is played choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the bottom of their owner's deck It's also doubles as removal um, You know if your opponent plays a counter play themselves or uh, You know some kind of battle card that has a counter on them Well, then go ahead you can go ahead and play this and it gets rid of it it's unconditional it gets rid of anything the only thing it doesn't get of is anything ignoring barrier so uh, again added versatility i don't know how many you play of this but very good for the deck and then finally baby saiyan power absorb this is another tp baby card uh counterplay play this card and if battle card being played has an energy cost of two or less it's placed at the bottom of its owner's deck instead of being played activate main if your leader card is a blue baby card and you place this card from your hand to the bottom of your deck choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost greater than or equal to their current energy negate its skills for the turn and then return it to its owner's hand so essentially this is what, what this is great against are things like swap are things like gogeta where they're evolving very quickly into you know six seven eight drops um what this allows you to do is have answers to that you're negating the skills and you're turning it to the hand it gives the deck extra versatility when a meta is very much big bomb heavy which it very much is when we're talking about those red decks that are coming in next set so great card to have uh, in terms of options you definitely don't run four of but it has the added versatility that if it's not good in the matchup that you're playing against in terms of its activation main it's a counter play that can hit stuff pretty good then we have the search uh, there's only one card searcher really for the deck outside of like the field card which searches for you the leader which searches for you and um, there's one one drop which is dr mew if your leader card is a blue but uh if your leader card is a blue baby when you play this card look at up to three cards from the top of your deck add up to one mono blue card with a counter skill among them to your hand then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order so if you need to start searching for your gohans or anything but remember you want to be a draw go style deck so playing any energy on your turn feels super bad so while i'm not here to get th while this isn't a strategy guide i'm just saying odds are you if you do run any of these you're running very few because you can't really afford to be using energy on your turn unless you're actively closing out the game or using it to get extra resources to help you survive and like actual like i'm talking draw apes here and even draw apes don't feel that great in the matchup so we got some great old inclusions mono blue counters that are five or less that doesn't just mean anything that's 11 there's a lot of old inclusions that are really great with this mafubo is a phenomenal card for two it's a phenomenal card what about mafuba for one mafuba for one is incredibly strong make your here's a draft box inclusion counter attack negate the attack and then play this card switch up to one of your energy card to act mode so now we have an extra battle card that comes in for free it's a Weasis coercion on a 15k body awesome it allows us to add even more into our crackback strategy you know as many inclusions as we can have of free negates all the better hit deadly vanguard not only does it cost two less on your opponent's turn it costs one less because of the field card so hey now we have a two cost hit which prevents the play of a card and it bounces back a card so it does a lot while you don't see too many lists include them because turns out the baby core is strong enough on its own it is something to consider maybe for the sideboard there are some matchups that this is going to be phenomenal and it's a counterplay that hits two cards one that's coming in one that's already there that in its own has a lot of versatility especially at two energy and then finally we've got the secret 
Yes, blue was one of the colors that got blessed with a secret this set. And I'd argue probably one of the best ones. Um, you know, Broly is very strong. Don't get me wrong. Super strong. But I turn, I think in terms of decks that this can have an impact for, this is by far the biggest. So, Baby Hatchack, Saiyan Destroyer, 8 cost, ultimate, counterattack. If you have 3 or more energy, negate the attack. Then play this card and your opponent can't attack for the turn. Boom. Blue finally has a Nimbus. It comes in at, you know, turn three, but in this deck, that's not an issue. Getting to turn three is never going to be an issue for baby. Permanent. If this card would be removed from your battle area, remove it from the game instead. So unless you're negating its skills, you are not getting this back. This is a one-time use card. You could use like Zeno and like meme this back into your deck. I'm looking at you, Josh. But if that's not the case, then odds are this is a one-time use, but he's also a 40k, right? So in a deck like this where you're playing a lot of attrition, big dumb beaters that come in for essentially free are what you want because you don't want to be spending a lot of energy going into your place. And why are we not spending a lot of energy on this? It is nade cost. Well, because it has a second permanent. If your leader card is mono blue, you can choose one other card in your hand and discard it instead of paying its energy cost when activating its counter skill from your hand. So for one measly card in your hand, you're able to go ahead and play this. Mind you, you want to play it on turn three because, well, because or else you don't get the Nimbus effect. <laughs> but it's just to say that for one card, we get a 40k beater that ends the, or that essentially ends our opponent's turn. Super strong. You, a lot of people give this card a lot of flack because it doesn't close out games on its own. But when you consider the archetypes that it goes in, one extra turn can essentially mean win the game, especially when your opponent goes all out, spends all their energy to try and beat you with like, you know, a big triple attacker or a dual attacker or anything like that. This card says, nope, this is going through. And even if the battle card doesn't get played, even if baby hatchack never hits the board, you are still getting that Nimbus effect. Incredibly, incredibly powerful. And that's the Archetype 101 on Mono Blue Baby Control. Easily the most annoying archetype going into set 11 and one that will easily, easily be the frustrations of majority of the community. Uh, very much in the same vein that Janemba was and then Hatchack after that. It's one of those decks that really slows down the tempo of the game in a way that's frustrating, you know? It's not through interaction, a lot of people think it's through the lack of interaction, but I will say that I think the very successful players with this deck are going to be the greater pilots who know when to switch from aggro to control, um, and switching that pivot. Being that pivot with this deck is very difficult. Understanding how to be the aggressor, um, how to punch in when you need to, um, is really going to make or break whether this leader is good or not. What do you think of the deck? Let me know in the comments down below. I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions on how they feel this deck is going to be in the set 11 meta. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hey, if you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. And if you want to see more Archetype 101s, then subscribe. They're going up all week as we are getting ready for the release of set 11. With that said, I'll get you guys on the next one. Ciao.